MJD, what you got? Red, I'm here with it. The pride of Helix High. Helix High School, I mean, where you guys really thought you could beat Dennis Al, but that's neither here nor there. Alex Smith, how has it been your 13th training camp? How's that going for you? Uh, you know what? Um, to be honest, you know, you get older, I think, as you go on. Um, it's crazy to say this, especially with all the regulations, no more two-a-days. Uh, I really do. You start enjoying this more and more. Um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, you realize you don't take them for granted anymore any of these days, any of these opportunities. Um, and for us, I, honestly, I, I really enjoy our locker room. I really enjoy our coaching staff. So it, it's fun to come up here and compete. Um, I love going away for camp. We're staying in the dorms. We're all hanging out with each other. Uh, for me, as an older guy, it, it's an opportunity to, to spend some time with the young guys uh, that I don't normally get. You know, back at the facility because I'm going home with my kids and uh, wife. So uh, I, I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy being out here. I enjoy enjoy mixing it up and competing with these guys. You know, the the, the next question. I just don't want the politically correct answer. I want you to tell me yeah. the truth. Yeah. Um, where do you do your speed work at? Because in fantasy, all of us love fantasy here. Yes. Those rushing touchdowns when you run away from guys, yeah, yeah. you're able to dive in the end zone. Yeah. Where do you where do you get that working at? <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, uh, I, I got to say, it's just all natural, you know. No, I don't know. You know just, Get uh, out of here, yeah. natural. Yeah. Are you an athlete? Uh, if you would have played us in high school, you would have seen it maybe. Uh, no, just, uh, you know, like I said, we got a competitive group. Uh, the young guys keep, keep you fresh, keep you uh, chasing them. Uh, and that's really all I'm trying to do. I occasionally beat them. Well, this offense, right, everyone, you know, talking about so many different things, Tyreek Hill, you have Spencer Ware, you have Travis Kelsey. What are the expectations for this offense coming forward? I mean, last year you guys did some really good things. How can you improve on those? Yeah, I mean, I think two things. Uh, for one, um, you know, for us, obviously, it's just about getting the job done. I think we take a lot of pride in having a lot of guys that can beat you, being able to beat you in a lot of different ways, right? Uh, a ton of different personnel groups, spread it out, bring it in. Uh, run pass, all, all those things. I, I think we take a lot of pride in that as an offensive unit. Um, you know, and then I think consistency, right? You got to do it on a consistent basis. Um, and I think those go hand in hand because I think when you when you have more weapons and the more ways you can get things done, I think uh, w when you do stumble or, or, or face adversity, I mean, you're able to uh, you're able to get to something else, find a new way. Uh, so really, I think that's kind of our identity, and just uh, kind of continuing to, to work on it and build on it. Well, I know, you're not supposed to, I'm not supposed to be a fan of teams, but I am a Raiders fan. You guys kind of whooped up on them a little bit. You guys kind of run this AFC West division. It's probably the toughest uh, in yeah, football now, yeah. right? How do, you, how do you stay on top of it? You know, to be honest, I, yeah, I mean, I think uh, no question last year, obviously, I think came out, came out the better team in, in the division. And, and uh, but you look back at all those games and how close all of them are. Uh, I, I do think there is a strong sense of pride within the AFC West from every team with the competition, about the depth of our division. I think we all take a lot of pride in, in, in the, that it is the best division in football. Uh, every single matchup uh, is its own unique rivalry uh, that goes back a long way that is, that is uh, incredibly intense. Uh, the margin of error from top to bottom, I think, uh, so small. So yeah, I mean, I think it, there's a lot of pride there to, to win it. Um, and, and certainly that's the mindset for us, but, but really obviously not, no one's gonna give us anything based off last year. So uh, I gotta start over. Everybody's gonna be gunning for us. Last question here, and this is really the most important one. What do you eat on Junk Food Fridays? <laughs> uh, the, the Junk Food Fridays have changed a little bit. It definitely cleaned up uh, from especially the, the stories I heard back in the day. But um, usually there's a little pizza there. Uh, you know, that's kind of the go-to. No, no, like, barbecue, no In-N-Out burger, no... We, I mean, there's some barbecue always around in Kansas City, so that's always close at hand. But uh, no In-N-Out in KC, man. Well, so you got to tell, because this is what I came here for. I mean, you, you're cool and everything, but yeah. I really came here for junk food Fridays. It's Monday. Barbecue, man, barbecue. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of them. What should take I get and where should I go? Take your pick. Uh, you got to go to Burnt Ends, man. It's Kansas City. What, uh, is, what is a Burnt End? I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not an expert on this, but it is a part of the rib. Uh, it's a burnt end of the rib. <laughs> the rib. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them, man. Everybody has their favorite. Uh, I would say uh, go to Joe's or uh, Q39, man. Those are one or two spots. Red, I, I think I'll be seeing you there tonight. Burn ends. It's pretty good. God, would you quit talking about food? I got three more hours on set here, man, before we can get lunch. You're making me hungry. All right, Maurice Jones, Listen, Drew. I can't help there it. It's Chiefs. Kansas City. <laughs> I, no, look, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, buddy. Uh, 
Great stuff there with uh, Alex Smith. Uh, thanks very much. We're going to stick right here in the AFC West and uh, talk about a team here and head out west to Costa Mesa, California, a team that has their sights set on challenging the Chiefs for the AFC West crown in 2017. Our Alex Flanagan is with the Los Angeles Chargers uh, as they begin a new era there in L.A. in Orange County, really right now in Costa Mesa, California, the site of their training camp this year. And uh, Alex, uh, Philip Rivers' first practice uh, in the books as a member of the Los Angeles Chargers. What was his reaction to day one? Yeah, Red, an exciting day out here. First of all, I know MJD, I think, is coming here maybe at the end of the week, and they have a lot of food trucks lined up, so he's going to be excited. But last time I worked with him, he told me he was going vegan, so I don't know what all this barbecue talk is about, so you're going to have to get with him on that. Yeah, I think As that lasted Phillip about an Rivers, hour. Um, I think that, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> the vegan stuff's gone. All right, well, as for Philip Rivers, um, he came into yesterday's practice um, excited, but saying that he was more nervous than usual because of all of the unknowns here. Obviously, this team has been in transition, and I think it was really a good thing for the entire organization to get day one under their belt because now they kind of know what to expect. They had a really good day of practice. When I asked Philip Rivers afterwards what he could tell after day one about his team, he said that we have the talent. He said it's not like you go out there and you say, like, oh, gosh, we, we're missing this position. We need this guy. This is where we have a hole. He said all of that is there, and that what what they need to do over the next couple of weeks is focus on bringing that together. Remember, they've only been with their new head coach for a short time, so building the chemistry, the camaraderie. Uh, they have a new defensive coordinator as well, switching to a new defense. So I think there's a lot of those nuances that they're working on. And I liked what Alex Smith just said because Philip Rivers, I think, kind of is saying the same thing that he is excited to be here at training camp and he's really excited to be staying in a hotel with these players, something he usually doesn't do. He usually stays at home with his eight children which he says can be kind of a distraction at times. So being able to spend time and get to know these young guys, building that camaraderie and that chemistry is what these next few weeks are about for the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, well, Rivers was without the services of his rookie wide receiver, the seventh overall pick in the draft this year, Mike Williams. And it sounds like, based on what we've been hearing from our NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport, that that absence might be an extended one for Williams. What are the Chargers saying about the impact of missing him out there at practice? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, keep in mind that it's hard to miss something that you never had, right? So Philip Rivers has yet to throw a single pass to Mike Williams. And he said yesterday, obviously, when you draft somebody seventh overall, it's disappointing not to have them here. But Rivers saying it's not like he was a draft pick where you kind of said, we have to have this guy this year to make things happen. A little bit different than maybe Joey Bosa last year, where the Chargers drafted him in the first round. And he was absolutely a huge part, a piece of their puzzle from the moment that he was drafted. You knew he was going to be plugged into that defense and that he was expected to be an impact player. I think that they, the Chargers have some depth at wide receiver, and I think that's a good thing. Obviously, having Mike Williams there, especially in the red zone, would have been a great thing for Phillip Rivers, and I think we still don't know exactly when he's going to come back, but I think Ian is right. It's a herniated disc. Right now, he's rehabbing it. I think they're going to have to wait until it's uh, asymptomatic, really, and who who knows when that will be and if that doesn't happen then that would be when they would look at surgery but I certainly think Rhett there's the potential for him to possibly miss part of the season some people saying all of it just depending on how his back responds really we did see him working out yesterday we did see him catching some balls uh, from the jug machine but uh, let me say this I think a couple of those wide receivers could benefit from him not practicing especially Tyrell Williams yeah. who really last year went over a thousand yards had a, a ton of receiving yards for this team and is really as poor to kind of continue what he had last year was a bit of a breakout. Don't forget the tight end, Hunter Henry. We're going to watch him today. He's a stud, and yeah. I'm expecting he's going to have a breakout year, too. And old reliable Antonio Gates still hanging around. Yes. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, here. Still, still plenty of targets out there for Phillip Rivers. Alex Flanagan live for us there in Costa Mesa, California. Going to look forward to seeing more from Phillip Rivers tomorrow with our Steve Mariucci as he joins the GMFB crew. 7 a.m. Eastern time, our coach going one on one with the LA Chargers QB just a couple of days into training camp there in Costa. We're with a look at where our uh, Ian Rappaport has been uh, running around during training camp, apparently on his prop plane, uh, which is cool. Um, it's true. 
Yep. Ian is now in Allen Park, Michigan with the Detroit Lions. Um, and uh, Ian, uh, you know, the, the Lions made Glover Quinn a big free agent acquisition, acquisition a few years ago from the Houston Texans. And uh, they're a pretty big fan of the production they've gotten, and now they want to keep him around. Yeah, one of the more uh, productive defensive players, Red, just signed him yesterday to a two-year extension, pays him $13 million, a lot up front. He gets $9.5 million guaranteed. And, you know, Red, it's not one of those mm. huge, high-profile deals like Xavier Rhodes got yesterday. But inside this Lions locker room and inside this building, this is a very important one. And the reason is because Glover Quinn does everything right. And, and I've been here today when you talk to Lions people, that's basically what you learn is that this is a guy who they're very happy to reward, the kind of guy that other players in the locker room look to, a leader on, on defense. And, you know, if you want to try to show a locker room full of players that if you do the right things, you act well on the field, off the field, you're productive, you get rewarded. Glover Quinn is a very good example of that, by the way, also represented by the same agency, CAA, as Matthew Stafford is. So maybe a good sign for the future, maybe. Yeah, working together, uh, at least, uh, to come to a, a yeah. common agreement there. And, you know, it, it'll help uh, Glover Quinn, who, you know, really has su such a hold of that defense and kind of runs runs the show out there that uh, he kind of maybe helped take a rookie under his wing, a guy like Jared Davis, their first-round draft pick. Uh, what have the Lions seen on him so far? Yeah, that's a great point. And, Rhett, the Lions really like what they have seen from Jared Davis. And, obviously, they're just a couple practices in. But the best thing about Jared Davis and – you know, you know, you never know what you get from a draft pick until they get in the building. They had the character reports on Davis. They were very, very good. All his marks were high pre-draft. He's a high character type of guy. And he has been that and more in the building as far as learning, as far as uh, trying to understand what, what they're doing, as far as work ethic. You know, this is the guy they really hope is the face of their defense for the next 10 or 12 or more years. And if you're looking for a comparison as far as what kind of player – Jared Davis is, the Patriots had Gerard Mayo for 10 years. He was their mm -hmm. linchpin defensively. He was their brains of their defense. And Bill Belichick and the Patriots, I know, thought Jared Davis was similar, obviously never had a chance to take him. Well, that is exactly what the Lions hope they have in their first rounder from Florida. Yeah, Bob Quinn, uh, obviously there with the Patriots uh, when uh, Gerard Mayo was the uh, stalwart of that defense. Uh, all right, Ian, uh, let's move from Allen Park, Michigan, out to Costa Mesa, California, where the Chargers were really excited to get their first-round draft pick, the seventh overall pick, uh, Mike Williams, on the field. But it sounds like, Ian, that uh, he is – oh, hey, Greg Rosenthal's there with us uh, as well. But let's uh, let's stick there with uh, Ian. We'll come back to Greg here in a moment. And and Ian, Sorry, some bad news about that first round draft pick, Mike Williams. Uh, what, what more can you tell us? Yeah, and the Chargers discussed this publicly yesterday that Mike Williams back, which is something they believe is improving, and certainly see the light at the end of the tunnel here. But it is not going to allow him to practice at least during training camp. So that is going to be several weeks for Mike Williams. He's done. The rest part of it, he has stayed off his back, as this herniated disc that he's been dealing with since actually rookie minicamp and OTAs. Now it's all about rehab. They do not believe that surgery is something that is in his future. They believe it is going to heal non-surgically. And Dr. Robert Watkins, who has been working with Williams, he believes that as well. It is just a timing uh, matter now. And does he have enough time to be ready for the regular season, or is this someone who might have to miss a couple games? Wow. Uh, all right. Uh, that's some unfortunate news there for the Los Angeles Chargers. And uh, our Greg Rosenthal just couldn't wait for his close-up here at Inside Training Camp Live. Had to pop <laughs> up uh, a little bit early. Uh, but, uh, Greg, let's, uh, let's bring you back in here for a second because uh, safe to say that Mike Williams uh, will not be a part of the Making the Leap series uh, this year, M maybe next year. But uh, that, that an unfortunate uh, development there for the Chargers as they were hoping to have his big play potential. It is absolutely a big loss. You lose a top 10 right, pick. Thanks. But I don't think they're going to miss Mike Williams. I know that sounds crazy, but it was going to be tough for Mike Williams to break into this receiver group. That is how young, deep, and talented the receivers are that Phillip Rivers is throwing to. Think about the players that he has. Keenan Allen, 25 and under. Tyrell Williams, who had as many plays over 40 yards last season as any wide receiver in football. 
Uh, Travis Benjamin, the third receiver, can make a lot of plays out of the slot. Hunter Henry is so good and so young right now that he's going to put Antonio Gates on the bench in a role where he's really playing more in the red zone. Then you have Melvin Gordon catching passes out of the backfield. I look at this group and I thought Mike Williams was really going to be number six, number seven in terms of targets on this team. And Tyrell Williams is the player that I really believe people are sleeping on. When you watch what he does after the catch in the red zone, really any part of the field, I think he can be a solid number two receiver to Keenan Allen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that big getting Keenan Allen back from injury uh, for sure for Philip Rivers uh, and company. Let's switch uh, the defensive side of the ball and a guy who is a for sure making the leap candidate, but uh, set the bar pretty high as a rookie despite missing <laughs> a few games. And that's Joey Bosa, Greg. Everyone knows Joey Bosa was great. I'm not breaking any news right there, but I, I don't think people really understand how great Joey Bosa was when he came into the league he immediately was a top five pass rusher you just do not see that out of young outside linebackers or defensive ends now he's playing a more natural position for him in gus bradley think of what he did playing with that dislocated finger he can do everything he can stop the run he can get around the edge as a pass rusher you saw a lot of his sacks were on effort where he does a spin move inside they block it then he comes outside he can do a little bit of everything i think this defense is set up better for him him and melvin ingram across from each other to me is the best one-two punch pass rushing duo in the league and as good as joey bosa was a year ago I think he is ready to take the next step where he is talked about with Von Miller and JJ Watt maybe a Patrick Peterson as a top five defensive player in the league he really does not need to get that much better from his rookie season to be in that category absolutely heroic reporting and insight there from our guy Greg Rosenthal <laughs> around the NFL team uh, and uh, you know making the leap is is one of my most favorite series to read uh, heading into training camp uh, Greg appreciate it thanks very much my friend uh, hey we sent our guys back to camp this year it's one of also another one of my favorite parts about training camp Steve Smith our guy our Steve Smith senior just retired from the Ravens joined our team decided to go back to camp with the Baltimore Ravens and you're gonna Catch that tonight on Training Camp Primetime, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on NFL Network.